In the news this week, parents are best at child raising, not politicians, says a senior social policy academic. MSPs are told they will get a vote on the named person scheme. And a mum who chose life challenges MPs over abortion buffer zones. Hello. A leading voice against plans to ban smacking has been speaking to the BBC. Dr Ashley Frawley, senior lecturer in social policy at Swansea University, told the corporation that moves to criminalise parents who smack their children would disproportionately impact migrant families, the poor and the working class. Speaking to the Christian Institute, she set out her personal as well as her academic motivation for fighting the proposals. My opposition to this ban comes from my own personal background as a, as a Canadian First Nations or Aboriginal woman. And I've seen firsthand how thousands of children were taken away from their families simply because um, Aboriginal women didn't fit the middle class stereotype of the stay at home mom and pumps and pearls. And I hear echoes of this in the current discussion around smacking. And there's this implication that only, you know, white middle class people who've consulted the literature are really capable of the tough business of raising children. Um, and, you know, I have no plans myself to smack my own daughter. It's not really my style. But I recognize that it can come from a place of love and that nobody cares for children more than their own parents. The Be Reasonable campaign against parents being criminalized for smacking their children is supported by the Christian Institute. Find out more at bereasonable.org.uk. Women's groups, therapists, doctors, academics and transgender activists have come together to slam government plans to streamline the process of changing sex. A consultation on the Gender Recognition Act is due to be published this autumn and is expected to recommend allowing people to change their legal gender simply by declaring it. But in a parliamentary meeting hosted by Conservative MP David Davis, critics hit out at the proposals to change the definitions of male and female. An attendee of the meeting, who underwent sex change surgery almost 10 years ago, said the move would do little to tackle discrimination and instead leave women unable to challenge men seeking to gain access to female-only areas. LGBT lobby group Stonewall has claimed self-definition would reduce discrimination, but another transsexual says they've got it wrong. The idea that somehow people will face less discrimination if they can self-declare is fallacious and it needs calling out. Scottish politicians will be given a vote on controversial named person data sharing rules following a government concession. Last month, MSPs called for a vote on a draft code of conduct. Previously, Deputy First Minister John Swinney said that he would have the final say. But he has now written to colleagues to say Parliament will get final approval of the code of practice. Following his letter, he appeared in front of a Holyrood committee and attempted to defend the scheme. He said if the current legislation was not passed, then the concept of the named person goes into a hiatus. The Notre Dame Person's campaign group welcomed the pledge, but said changing tack and now granting MSPs a vote on the code of practice is the absolute bare minimum that Mr Swinney can do. Of course, the best thing he could do is scrap it altogether. And finally, MPs have heard how a woman decided against going through with an abortion because of the gentle presence of pro-life supporters. The woman, known only as Kate, said her young daughter is an amazing, perfect little girl who would not be alive if the advocates for the unborn had not been there. Sir Edward Lee shared the woman's story with MPs during a debate in Westminster Hall. I never wanted to go through with an abortion, but I felt a lot of pressure from people around me who offered it as a no-brainer solution. On the way into the clinic at Mary Stopes, clinic at Ealing, I was offered a leaflet by a woman who I spoke to briefly. She just told me she was there if I needed her. I then went into the clinic, still not happy about being there for an abortion, but under immense pressure from a group of people who were with me to go through with it. Sir Edward went on to explain how Kate left the abortion centre, spoke to the pro-life campaigner again and was offered support. As a result, she chose life for her unborn child. I had my baby who is now three and a half years old. She is an amazing, perfect little girl and the love of my life. I want MPs here today. Calling to introduce buffer zones to realise that she would not be alive today if they had their way. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.